Hi folks, welcome to this week's update of the Holy Regular ECY Shedcast, which has been surprisingly regular recently, hasn't it? So, um, what's been going on this week? Well, not a lot. Well, I say not a lot, it has, but not a lot to report. Um, so, with having had last week off, I'm now really behind. Um, and uh, both Debbie and Claire are off this week as well, um, which is fine, obviously. <laughs> um, but it just means that, yeah, I'm really behind. So um, I'm just trying to gradually catch up, uh, which is going well, and trying to be mindful of kind of taking a rest um, every now and then as well. Um, that bit is more challenging, but um, you know, just trying to keep in mind how bad my back was and that I really don't want that to happen again right now. So um, yeah, trying to, trying to be mindful. Um, it's working, it's going well. Um, my back is pretty much um, back to normal, I would say. Now I've been out for a couple of short runs this week, which went really well. Um, I, I had a lovely time. I didn't look at my watch um, to see what my, you know, see what my pace is, because it's really tempting when it's right there on your wrist to just have a sneaky little look and be like, mm. and then if you're going slow then you sort of end up pressuring yourself to try and go faster even if you don't really want to and if you're already going quite fast then you're like oh i better keep this up then and pressure yourself to do that um and there's no really no need like nobody cares absolutely nobody cares it's literally just an ego boost so um it was very, very nice and, um, oh, sorry if that's moving. It was, uh, yeah, very relaxing to just plod along, look at the scenery, have a lovely time. And the, the fields that I was running past, um, but like really, like they're full of golden barley at the moment. So absolutely beautiful. And the thing is, it's right next to a main road, but there's a big hedge um blocking it off so i always think you know the drive the, the drivers are driving along just oh <coughs> ah oh, i should have seen that coming i should have put the dogs inside <coughs> sorry um but yeah i always i get that thing where and it's same when you cross a motorway bridge the dri drivers are just driving along and i think god I, I would so much rather be out here running and looking at this beautiful field and it's got wildflowers along the edge as well it's gorgeous um so anyway, yeah, that was good. Um, I'm very pleased. I've, I've got my recovery time down to 10 days from the day that my back went to getting back out for my first run. And um, if you know anything about herniated discs, you, you'll know that that's a very, very short amount of time for recovery. So I'm really, really pleased about that. And as I said, I think I said it last week, I really do put that down to all the strength and conditioning that I do. Um, and again, like I said last week, it's simple stuff. Um, I did a little workout last night, didn't even leave the premises. Um, you, there's all sorts that you can do at home, um, just using your own body weight and your own movement. Don't need any equipment or anything really. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's where that is. I've got, um, I think I've, I've probably mentioned it, I've got an ultra marathon in five weeks. As I realised, I thought it was seven, but it's five. Um, so right now is kind of peak training time for that. So um, it's hard not to be anxious about missing that training, but I have been training consistently um, since, well, since about February, because I was ill a lot over winter and missed a lot, but then stopped being ill and got back to training um, and that's been really consistent so that will stem, stand me in really good stead um, 
so yeah, tomorrow I'm going to go out and try um, a, a very gentle trail, a sort of walk, walk, uh, walk in the hills and then running wherever I can. So, you know, again, no pressure, just um, plod along and enjoy it and take it easy um, to get to know a bit more of the route that I'll be doing on race day. Um, so we'll see how that goes and uh yeah so it's all good it's all good i've got a lot on my mind i guess at the moment though um because i've got that kind of you know um badgering away at me um but i've written out a, a plan in the calendar so i know exactly what i'm doing and when um and i've got one of my training buddies is going to come along for some of those activities so um having it all organized really helps and it means that I can compartmentalise that and I can focus on work. Um, so yeah, I feel a lot better ha for having got myself organised. <laughs> um, anyway, all of that is uh, not really yarn related. Um, so yeah, what about the rest of the week? Well, um, where was I last week? I was working on a loop order, wasn't I? So that's nearly finished now, very, very nearly finished. Um, I've also just finished the dyeing for an order for South Korea. And I've also, oh, sorry, there's some people walking past. The dog might go off in a minute. Um, oh, come on, hurry up. Oh, it's one of my neighbours, she's really She's actually really nice. Anyway, um, she's had a rough time recently. I was um, I was talking to her a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, she do, the dogs would have given her a fuss if they realised who it was. <laughs> anyway, they didn't bark, so it's all good. Um, where was I? So, just finished dying an order for South Korea. Wholesale, this is. And um, I've also just today finished dying an order for Seam haberdashery um who are in the uk so that's really, really cool um next week i will be on with dying an order for yana holic who is our japanese um what's the word stockist that's the word um so that will take a little while as well um, and then after that, I've got a wholesale order um, waiting in the wings that's going to a new stockist in Germany. So I will let you know more about that um, closer to the time. So uh, yeah, lots of wholesale work at the moment, which is fantastic. It's a really good thing because it means, as well as particularly international, because one of the biggest barriers now for us shipping internationally well, it's the price because that's been that it's been going up and up and up. But also, um, Brexit. I know I wang on about this all the time, but honestly, just Brexit <sighs> destroying everything. Um, so when Brexit came into force on the first of January twenty twenty one, we just literally overnight lost. I think 42% of our customer base um, because that, that was the percentage of customers in of our customers in the EU. Um, I think uh, over like, I've taken that from the past year's data. Um, and obviously um, we do still post, we still post the EU. Um, there's a system in place now that means that we can do that. Um, which is great, but I get the feeling that a lot of people don't know about it, um, which is understandable. But also the other thing is the cost of airmail has gone up so, so much as well. Um, and I'm fairly certain that that's probably a, um, you know, something that's preventing people from ordering from overseas, which is completely understandable. Um, but it is very frustrating. So it means that 
the, really the best way to get our yarn into international markets now is via wholesale. Um, and then the other good thing about wholesale to, sh to particularly uh, bricks and mortar shops is that it means that customers can go and see and feel the yarn before buying as well. So that's great. Um, and of course then if shops are stocking hand dyed yarn, it means that they can they can choose something a little bit different in every single order, um, which is a great way to to bring customers in to see what's new. So and then for us, it's when we get a big you know big wholesale order through, um, I mean big compared to a retail order, that's like a little bit of guaranteed income. Um, so it's really helpful for us as well. Um, to, to be honest, what I really like is doing a mix of both because I love the direct retail and I love dying for updates. It's just like, it's the whole reason I do my job. Um, you know, I can be really sort of creative and inspired and, um, you know, and then put it out there on the website and just hope that people like it. So to mix the two, the wholesale and the retail, is ideal, really. Um, Anyway, so it, it just, all of this just means that there won't be any updates for possibly a few weeks. What I might have to do is pause the wholesale dyeing, dye an update and get that out and then go back to wholesale dyeing maybe. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Watch this space, I'll update you anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, that's everything on the dyeing front. Uh, Debbie and Claire are both back next week. Um, so our speed will pick up a little bit because um, they will be able to pack the orders and do the yarn processing for me which is a huge help um, so yeah that's that's uh, shed quarters news uh, I have a knitting update a work in progress update this is my lapis and uh, which way around is it? It's this way around. I've just been, been stood here holding this the whole time. I'm just going to have to back away a bit so you can see it. There you go. So I know it, look, it looks really wide, um, but when I put it on, hopefully you can see that okay. It's not as wide as it looks. It's baggy, um, but I think I'll be able to get away with it. Um, it's due to have, sorry, I'm just looking down at it. It's due to have a, a bit of ribbing at the bottom here. So it is meant to be very cropped and that ribbing will bring it in and give it kind of a, more of a triangular shape, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's very nearly finished. I've done the, the sleeve edgings on both sides. I've just got the neck edging to do. Um, I did a three needle bind off for the shoulder, I'm afraid. Not, what was in the pattern? The pattern's got, um, is it like Russian grafting? Uh, or s something, Some a type of grafting I think it was. But I've done a three needle bind off because that's just my favourite for shoulders. Because look how much structure it gives it that won't it won't stretch and I've got quite narrow shoulders um, so I always use three needle bind off if I can for shoulders um, so yeah and I was thinking I think I said this last week I was thinking of doing well I said I think I said duplicate stitch but actually a I think maybe a line of surface crochet along the shoulders might be nice in the fuchsia um but we'll see i want to get it finished and then decide um whether i want to embellish it or not so yeah it's been quite compelling knitting this um the chevron section certainly was but even the even the stocking stitch um i found pretty good i didn't get too sick of it so that's good um so yeah, just ribbing to do, and then I'll be done, and then I can get back to my Kismet colour work jumper. 
uh, which will be cool and will take a hell of a lot longer than this did. So, uh, what else? Oh, I was, I was talking about, did I talk about books last week? I was reading um, a book called Wolf Hall. Some of you probably heard of it. It's all about Thomas Cromwell. I'm sure I've already mentioned it. It's all about Thomas Cromwell. Um, and it's all sort of based around Henry VIII. Um, it's quite a big chunk of a book. It's about, it was about 600 pages. I finally finished it anyway. Um, I must admit it was, it was interesting, but it kind of, the way it was written, I found it kind of hard to read in a way. I found it quite, I don't know if confusing is quite the right word, but um, it, it wasn't, yeah, the way it was written wasn't the easiest read for me. Um, but I did find it interesting enough to want to sort of continue all the way to the end. But it, it, it does ramble a lot. Like, it, it, I, I know I do, but this book, honestly, really, really, really rambled a lot. Um, I mean, on the flip side, that means that the level of detail kind of made you feel like you were there. Um, or the author was there, like almost inside Thomas Cromwell's head. Um, it's that detailed, but it was a bit much for me, and especially toward, more towards the end. In all honesty, I ended up kind of um, almost skipping whole paragraphs, or just like really lightly skimming them. Um, so I got a gist of what they said, and just like, yeah. I skimmed quite a lot towards the end because I just wanted it finished. Like I wanted to know what was happening, but I wanted to finish it as well. Um, so there's two more books in in the trilogy as well, and I just don't think I feel quite compelled enough to get them and read them. I might change my mind in the f at some point in the future, but for the for the moment, to be honest, I was kind of happy to just look up more information about Thomas Cromwell and read it in brief um but it did it did give me some insight because my history is not that great and it did give me some insight into that kind of period so um that's always nice anyway the next book I'm reading is much shorter it's about 300 pages and it's called Station Eleven and I would love to know if any of you have read it um and i can hardly honestly hardly put it down like i've had to leave it upstairs because if i go near it there is a real risk that i will abandon everything and just sit and read this book it's without giving too much away it's um it's about basically about a pandemic but it was written in 2014 i did check <laughs> and um it has a number of converging stories uh about people before and after um this pandemic hit uh so yeah it it's 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 very intriguing it's very easy to read and very very compelling um it would be really interesting to know if you've read it and if you agree or maybe you hated it um so yeah that i think until that book's fin i'm gonna have to finish it tonight basically because yeah I, I just need to get it finished um so that i can get back to my knitting and get that finished as well um so yeah uh that's all just, yeah loads of loads going on um I've grown an absolute, it's behind me actually, I'll, I'll move the camera in a minute. I've grown an absolute ton of salad by kind of by accident. Um, so I'm going to be eating salad like for every single meal for God knows how long. And the, the nice thing is though that there's enough for Debbie and Claire to have salad for their lunches when they come to work as well. Um, and I'm also growing peppers and tomatoes, which are going really well. Um, they're at the stage where they, they've needed quite a lot of re repotting recently because they've been in the small pots and they're gradually getting bigger. But as they get bigger, they don't need quite as much um, attention. 
so yeah that's a, a sort of it's a pleasure and it's really really cool um but you, it's just another thing like in my brain that i'm managing i guess um so yeah it's all fun and games isn't it um so yeah that is everything considering there's not been a lot on or there wasn't really much to actually report um the kind of is at the same time so uh yeah i think that's it thank you for all the comments on my previous video i really appreciate them um and i'm just about to go and reply to them all because i've just realized i haven't done yet um so yeah thank you for the for the comments and um yeah if you could just uh like share and subscribe um if you're not already or share it with your friends um anything like that is a huge help so thank you for all that and i'll see you next week bye